Ay. Hello po sa lahat. So pagpapatuloy po natin ang ating pag-aaral, History of Acupuncture. The Chinese Materia Medica, a pharmacological reference book po ito, used by TCM practitioners, described thousands of medical medicinal substances, primarily plants, but also some minerals and animal products. So nakalagay po yan doon sa book na yan, Materia Medica. Different parts of plants such as leaves, roots, stems, flowers, and seeds are used in TCM. Herbs are often combined in formulas and given as teas, capsules, liquid extract, granules, or powders. Then number two is acupuncture. Acupuncture is a family of procedure involving the stimulation of specific points on the body using a variety of techniques. The acupuncture technique that has been most often studied scientifically involves penetration the skin with thin, solid metal needles that are manipulated by the hands or electrical stimulation. So acupuncture involves the stimulation of anatomical points on the body with thin needle. Acupuncture patients use probably feel little to no pain. Acupuncture needles are hair thin and are manipulated either by hand or electricity. So wala pong ang dapat nararamdaman pag inacupuncture yung parang may may chi or mabigat. Yung po yung nararamdaman. So balik po tayo what is acupuncture use for? So ang acupuncture po ay is a popular alternative treatment for pain caused by injury, arthritis, headaches and migraines, cancer, fibromyalgia, Fibro, yeah, hindi ko yata alam bang gitin. Fibro, maralja, other chronic condition. Sciatic nerve and lower back pain, very good din po yan sa acupuncture. So those who suffer from back pain can benefit from acupuncture treatments. The treatment allows the muscle to relax and for the patient to feel relief from lower back pain. Yung Parkinson's disease din po, okay din po ang acupuncture. So, a study found that patients who suffer from Parkinson's disease can benefit from receiving acupuncture treatment on a regular basis. So, improvements were seen in Wallace, Kate, Langs, Stride. So, depression, stress, and anxiety. So, limited evidence is available on the effects of acupuncture and depression due to and consistencies and research and studies. So kulang pa ng study dyan. Studies are being performed to determine the efficacy of acupuncture for stress and anxiety, including post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Further research is needed to determine the benefits of acupuncture in these areas. Ang kailangan po pong i-research. Sa pain management, new study shows acupuncture to be effective at treating pain in the following condition. So, very good po siya sa chronic back, neck, and shoulder pain. Also in migraine and osteoarthritis. Varying result. So, your relief for cancer patient on chemotherapy. The Society for Integrative Oncology recommend acupuncture for pain. Side effects associated with cancer in treatment as well as nausea and vomiting from Chemotherapy. Kami po may experience na nag-treat ng acupuncture sa may mga cancer. So, nababawasan po yung, yung lakas kasi nung iniinom nila mga pain reliever, yung mga balyong. Pag na-acupuncture po, yun, mas, mas ano po sila, mas nawawala yung pain. Kaya minsan parang binabawasan yung dami nung iniinom nilang pain reliever. And conclusive evidence for other illnesses. So, acupuncture trial show little evidence to support that acupuncture can help relieve irrit irrit irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and other chronic diseases. So, kailangan lang siguro nito research pa. Why choose acupuncture? The hope of relieving pain and discomfort associated with alternative treatments are becoming more popular. So more and more, people want to stray away 
from pain, medication, and choose to use alternative methods to reduce their pain and discomfort. So, yung iba talaga, mas gusto na nila, siyempre yung needle kasi manipis naman, walang masyadong pain. So, walang pain na nararamdaman talaga pag in acupuncture. So, yun. Kaya, nag-acupuncture yung mga tao. Ito po mahalaga malaman na, no, risk of acupuncture. Yan. Yung may parang soreness na nararamdaman. So, kailangan talaga po, uh, nag-aaral tayo ng maigi sa pagtusok. At yung mga point location, dapat alam natin. Mga don'ts. Itong bleeding. Pero lang dun sa mga checkpoint natin, nag nagbibleed talaga tayo don para alisin yung mga hit. Pero, dapat pag nag-acupuncture tayo, walang bleeding na mangyayari dun sa mga, lalo pa sa organ. Kaya alam natin kung gaano kalalim yung pagtusok ng needle. Ilang tune ang dapat nalalim. Ilang pen. Yun. Then ito pong bruising. Kaya hindi natin pinapagalaw yung mga pasyente. Kasi minsan pag gumalaw sila, madidislocate po yung needle, nagkakaroon ng mga hematoma. So yun yung mga risk. Ano. Pero na, nawawala din naman po yun. Kaya lang syempre din po, ang delikado nun, talaga hindi natin pinapagalaw. Pwede kasing mabent din yung needle or mabali yung needle. So yun yung mga risk. Ano. So pwede rin po magka-infection. Kung hindi nyo susundin, mga akipangturista yung tamang paglilinis. Kasi yung kasama po yun sa ating kurso na kinukuha, paano yung tamang paglilinis ng mga area na tutusukan natin. Hand washing, pati rin po mismo yung mga kamay ninyo bago kayo mag-handle ng pasyente, bago kayo humawak ng needle. Yun, napakahalaga pong isang ano yan, isang, isang subject talaga yan sa acupuncture, sa hand washing, isang module. Then, yung organ injury, yan po ano. Kaya, hindi po basta-bastang nagtutusok kung hindi ka pa nag-aral ng acupuncture. Kasi may mga organ po tayo na delikado. Halimbawa dito sa may ano ng lungs. Pag nilaliman mo po dyan, pwede pong maabot yung lungs at magkaroon ng ano, hindi siya makakahinga kasi natusok mo yung lungs. Kahit din po sa likod ha, marami pong organs na delikadong tusukan nang hindi pa nag-aral. Kasi pwede mo pong maabot yung hindi mo alam yung lalim. So yun po yung mga risk of acupuncture. The future of acupuncture. The effects of acupuncture on the brain and body and how best to measure them, them are only beginning to be understood. Current evidence suggests that many factors like expectation and belief that are unrelated to acupuncture needling may play important roles in the beneficial effects of acupuncture on pain. And so, yun po yung ano ng National Center for Complementary Integrative Health. Thank you po for your attention. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mildred Digma, Certified Acupuncturist from Apayao. Let's proceed to history or the four classics, history of Chinese medicine. And let's go to Rizal to listen to Ma'am Teresita Sumile. Good afternoon again, everyone. History, continuation of history of Chinese medicine and the four classics. For a short period in AD 589, the Sui dynasty reunited China. The Sui dynasty was followed by the Tang dynasty, considered by many of the height of cultural development in China. The Sui spread China's influence as far as Magnolia, Vietnam, Central Asia, Korea, and Japan. Buddhist and Taoist strongly influenced medical thought during this time. San Simian was a famous physician, prolific author, and scholar well-versed in Taoist and Buddhist practice. He became known as the first medical ethicist in China, following the writing of On the Absolute Sincerity of Great Physicians, in addition to many other works. In this book, he addresses the need for diligent scholarship, compassion towards patients, and high moral standards in 
Medicine was more specialized by the time of the Sun Dynasty, and efforts were made to integrate past insights systematically. Number of texts published during this dynasty may have exceeded the number written during all the previous dynasties. 1027, Yang Wei Yi oversaw the casting of two bronze figures he designed to illustrate acupuncture point locations, one of which was used in the Imperial Medical College. Advances made in herbal therapeutics, several herbal texts compiled with illustrations during the Sang Dynasty. Herbal tastes and properties assigned based on the yin and yang nature. Functions assigned based on the herbs nature and its ability to treat specific symptoms. Efforts made to systematize herbal therapeutics. Increasing interest in Zhang Zhongzing writings due to his systematic application of traditional theoretical principles in the use of herbal medicine. Treatise on cold damage was revived, influencing medical medicine for the next several hundred years. Sparked the development of warm induced disease theory when being sway during the Ming Dynasty. Academic, academic medicine and systematic therapeutics. Formal physician education began. The Imperial College trained emperor's physicians, expanded, and in, in 10, 1076, Imperial Medical College fun, founded enrolled 300 students in addition to regional schools. Jin and Yuan dynasties, so the continuation of specialized medical thought and independent inquiry. Most of current Chinese medicine comes from the Sang, Jin, and Yuan dynasties. Physicians developed ideas during this period were based on the elaboration of therapeutic approaches from earlier theory. Ideas supported the application of five-phase theory in relation to seasonal influence supplementing the body, purging the body to eliminate evil influences, and supplementing the yin. Physicians continued to pursue lines of inquiry from previous dynasties, such as the far-reaching naturalistic exploration of Li Shi Chen. This grand materna medica included discussions in 1982 substances. I'm sorry, 1,892 substances. Continued exploration of more precise connections between disease, causation factors, and therapeutics. Several medical sects emerged, and then towards the end of the Ming Dynasty, Yanji Zhou wrote the great compendium of acupuncture and moxibustion which became one of the most influential acupuncture texts. Ming Dynasty considered the peak of the cultural expression of acupuncture and moxibustion in China. Medicine in Ming and Qing Dynasties. Intellectual trends of the Ming continued into the Qing Dynasty. The Tishan shares the discussion of warm disease, complemented Zhang Zhongjing's method of diagnosing and treating cold induced diseases using similar systematic methods of di to diagnose and treat those caused by heat. Political, economic, and social trends during the Qing dynasty lead to Western knowledge technology and science exposure, increasing the isolation of the residing Manchu rulers and broadening cultural horizons 
and medical inquiry. The combined effects of this exposure shook the classical underpinnings of Chinese medical thought lead to the 1822 elimination of acupuncture from the Imperial Medical College. At the close of Qing Dynasty in 1911, political and cultural institutions were in a state of decline. Scattered traditional Chinese medicine practitioners who were increasingly under fire from the advocates of a contemporary China and its modern medicine. Republic formulation following the collapse of the Qing left traditional medicine open to the conquering influence of Western medicine which caused the elimination of the Imperial College of Physicians. Western educated medical system reform advocates began to work towards the elimination of the traditional medicine of China, replacing it with Western medicine, resulted in a series of clashes and encounters from 1914 through 1936 concerning the regulation, establishment of elimination of practitioners of Chinese medicine. The traditional medicine of China or medicine became known as Chinese medicine, disliked by nationalists and Marxist reformers. the so-called Chinese medicine. New Chinese medicine rejects manifestly unscientific ideas, views yin yang and the five phases as naive and ancient containing elementarily dialectic ideas. This view resulted in the creation of Zhongyi as contemporary traditional Chinese medicine. Chinese Marxists use aspects of Zhongyi to build a strong medical infrastructure. Zhongyi exists parallel to Western medicine today using biomedical concepts along with traditional Chinese medicine. Acupuncture and herbal medicine are emphasized in educational programs. Care is de delivered in large hospitals in addition to in and outpatient services, private clinics, and pharmacies. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mam Teresita. Now we go to Baguio to listen to Mam Vina Pasqua discuss the yin and yang principles. Good afternoon, Mam Vina. Good afternoon po, Doctor. Good afternoon po sa lahat. So, yin and yang uh, principles, day three po. Uh, Intertransformation of yin and yang. In nature, the day changes into the night. The night changes again into the day. The morning corresponds to the yang within yang, which is increasing up to midday which is the utmost yang. So, tingnan natin ito. Uh, picture. So, ganyan po. So, dito nakikita po yung 12 p.m. Sa, ta sa 12 a.m. naman. Tapos, sunrise to sunset. Ganyan po. Uh, so, itong warming up sa yang yun. So, tapos, cooling down. Uh, yang within yin sunset at saka yin with, within yin po. The yang again increases from midnight and likewise yin decreases. The point of several does, does does not take place by chance, but rather if one extreme has reached its maximum and the other extreme naman has reached its uh, minimum. So tingnan na po natin itong uh, pictures. So, parehas din sa, sa una. Intertransformation, uh, 
The water of the seas and rivers, so yun po yan, evaporates and rises as steam, ito yung yang, into the atmosphere to again fall on the earth in the form of uh, rain. So yun, yun po yung yin. So tingnan na lang natin itong picture. In human beings, uh, if we catch a common cold, a healthy organism naturally responds with fever. Pag yung cold, uh, yin po yun, penetrates the organism, the body produces heat, uh, ito yung yang, in order to expel the cold. <clears throat> Excuse me. Active sport increases heat. So yan po, yang po yan in the body. In order to maintain the body temperature, the body reacts with perspiration. So pag pinagpawisan is cold from evaporation, so yin, which is used to call the heat. Inner dryness, it can cause a demand for moistening food. Pero pag yung food, which produces cloudy body fluids, is consumed, nade-develop nade naman ang dampness. Because yin nourishes yang, yang deficiency can be caused by yin deficiency. For example po, burnout syndrome and vice versa. So maaring may, uh, one can often observe heat, ito yung yang, as a reaction to cold, yin. Or cold as a reaction naman to heat. Clinically, important because the cause of a heat disease can be cold. Pag yung heat is dispelled, the underlying cold symptoms will appear. Mutual consuming of yin and yang. Uh, in nature, a blazing fire, ito yung yang, consume its fuel, yung yin, quickly. Uh, if one throws too much wood sa flame, the flame will be smothered. Uh, smothered. In human beings naman, yang is consumed by producing yin. Yin is consumed by uh, nursing the yang. If too much heat is present in the body, it will burn the body fluids and signs of dryness will appear. Pag exist heat naman, it can weaken uh, body fluids so that uh, this can no longer nourish the yang. Burnout syndromes uh, originates frequently on the basis of this principle. If you work with an overly excessive flame over the years, yung fuel, be, yung fuel po will be consumed and the flame will die. So yan lang po. Thank you, doctor. Thank you sa lahat. Thank you very much, Ma'am Vina. Next, we go to five elements. And let's listen once again, straight from Apayao, Ma Mildred. Ma. Good day, po. good day, Poli sa lahat. So our topic again: the five elements. The five elements theory. Generating sequence shows how balance is achieved in nature and how every element of balance. So we need wood to grow a fire, heat from the sun helps grow food and plants, earth grows soil full of minerals, metal minerals enrich water with iron, magnesium and potassium. Water provides growth for the trees and plants to flourish. Within our bodies, its, its system depends on each other to stay healthy and reach optimum health, homo, homoostasis, liver relaxed body for better flow and to manage stress. Heart provides a calm mind for better sleep. So yung spleen transforms nutrients for better digestion. Lung defends the body for a healthy immune system. Kidney holds up our DNA for healthy reproduction and growth. 
So if one is out of balance, it can trigger a chain reaction like this one. When a woman is experience, experiencing high stress levels, she may be anxious and cannot sleep, which affect, affects her choice of food to keep her energy up during the day. Coffee, sugar, junk foods. Her diet doesn't feed her immune system, and she will catch cold and flu more often. If she's trying to conceive, she may experience difficulties as her low immune function can result in early pregnancy loss. Miscarriage put a lot of physical stress on the body and mind, making her frustrated and angry. So when treating patient, it's key to figure out which elements was affected first to make the proper treatment plan and address the root. So yun po yung ibig sabihin nun, tingnan muna natin ano yung mga organa affected dun sa mga elements. And tulad po niyan. So the five elements generating sequence. So start tayo sa wood. Wood generates fire. Fire, heat, sun is needed to grow earth. Ito po yung parang summary uli nung kanina. No? Siyang cycle po ito. So earth provides soil high, high in minerals, metal. Minerals, metal, enrich water. Water grows wood. So yun po yung generating cycle or siyang cycle. So sa mga organs naman po, ito po yung relationship nila. No? So simula tayo sa kidney and bladder. So fertility issue leads to stress. Halimbawa nga hindi nagkakaanak. So pag nagkaroon ng stress, i-attack niya ang liver. Then liver and gallbladder, stress can lead to insomnia kasi hindi ka makakatulog pag marami kang stress. Yan. So pag nagkaroon na po ng problems sa insomnia, insomnia leads to craving, cravings due to fatigue. Yan. Pag namumroblema ka, minsan gusto mo kain ka ng kain, hindi mo na namamalayan. Then magiging out of balance na. No? So ganun na magiging itsura na natin. But diet leads to pure, poor immune system. Then pwede po niyang i-attack si lungs and large intestine. So pag na-attack na siya, depleted immune system, immune function can lead to infertility issue. Babalik uli doon. Yan, babalik uli doon sa problema niya. So yung root niya ay ang kidney. Kaya yun mo ang ating kagamutin, yung root. Pwede po kasi natin makita lahat yun eh, yung mga ano, yung cycle na yun. So, kailangan mahalaga po, tingnan yung root. So, ito po naman eh, generating interaction. Yan, siyang cycle po ano. So, generating water generates, ayun po, yung dating diniscuss na natin. Water to wood, wood to fire, fire to earth to metal. Overcoming interaction, Metal to wood, yung parang star na drawing, yung red po. Kanya din tayo titingnan natin kung paano nakukunek yung mga organs. So from the wood, green po yung color, wind yung kanyang climate, then emotion is anger, liver and gallbladder ang, ang organ, so sila po yung namamahala sa sinews and tendons, eyes and nails. Ito po sa marito, mahaliga pong tinatandaan. Tatandaan po natin to. Then yung fire, siyempre andyan yung summer, red, heat, and joy. And po yung heart, small intestine, blood vessel, tongue, and complexion. Kasi kung makikita po ninyo sa so mga pasyente ninyo, yung mga ayan, alam na ninyo kung anong organ. Then pag late summer naman, ito yung earth. Yellow, damp, perceiveness, worry, skin, stomach, fresh muscle, mouth, and lips. Then metal, Autumn, white, dryness, grief, sadness, lung, large intestine, skin, skin, nose, and body hair. Yan. So, so water, winter, black, cold, fear, kidney, bladder, bone, bone marrow, ears, and head and hair. So, ibig sabihin po nun, kung anong yung organ na nandun at ano yung mga responsible pang makikita ninyo pag may problema sa head sa hair, kidney po yun. Pag sa tenga, sa, sa, sa kidney din. Pag nakita niyo yung kulay ng kanyang dila na parang blue or black, So mas kidney po yung affected ano or or yung so ano ng water nasa ano po siya ng yin. Yan po yung tulong niyang mga summary na yan. Alam natin kung yin or yang. So pag red nakita natin is yang. Pag white is yin. Ito pa po yung magandang summary. So sa element po <clears throat> pag yin organ. So ayan, sa wood liver, sa fire heart. Earth, spleen, metal, lungs, water, kidney. Ang partner organ po niya, gallbladder, small intestine, spleen, heart, lung, large intestine, and water and bladder. 
So summary din po ito kanina. So yung season, spring, summer, between fall, winter. Sa color, ang wood green, fire red, earth yellow, metal white, and waters black. Sa senses, so alam po natin ano, pag may problema sa mata, si ano po yan, si liver gallbladder. Pag may problema sa tang, nakita ninyo, si heart, small intestine. Then si earth ay ang kanyang lips and mouth. Sa so, spleen, stomach, sa nose, si lungs, and sa ears, si kidney. Sa tissue naman, syempre si liver, si news, pababa na lang basa ko. Ang taste ay sour, emotion is anger, weather is oh, sana ng wind. Then si fire, so vessel, bitter, joy, and summer heat. Si earth, siyang namamahala sa muscle, ang kanyang taste ay sweet, uh, emotion is worry, overthinking, and ang kanyang climate ay yun ang climate ni, ni Earth. Sino na pong nakatanda sa inyo? Kasi ulan to eh. Tam. Okay. Next is lang. So skin pa dyan, sadness and dryness. Dryness po yan si ano, kaya cactus na sa ano siya. Sa, sa init. Then si kidney, siya pong namamahalas sa bones. Ang kanyang taste ay salty. Ang kanyang emotion ay shock. Ang weather niya ay uh, cold. So, so water po yun. Ano. Ito po, mahalaga pong tinatandaan po yung summary na yun. Yung nga sinasabi ko, pwede po yung i -ano yan, laminate Habang tinatandaan natin sa ating panggagamot, kasi hindi naman agad natatandaan yan eh. So at least meron tayong guide. Okay po. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mildred. Then we proceed to vital substances featuring the types of chi. And let's welcome once again, Ma'am Teresita Sumile. Good afternoon, Ulit, Dr. Hector and classmates. Uh, patuloy pa rin tayo sa types of chi. Your vital energy or chi flows through energy channels called meridians. So it flows in the heart, pericardium, lung, stomach, urinary bladder, gallbladder, colon, triple warmer, intestine, spleen, liver, and kidneys. When the flow of chi is obstructed, body cannot perform its five cardinal functions. So it results to illness. In chi deficiency, symptoms are fatigue, lowered immunity, poor digestion, breathing problems. In excess chi, there is stress, insomnia, and dry mouth. So, food chi or go chi. This is the first stage in transformation of food into chi. So, the spleen extracts food chi and sends it up to the lung where it may transform into various other kinds of chi, like zong chi or blood. Gathering or ancestral or pectoral chi or zong chi. It nourishes heart and lungs. It promotes lung function of controlling chi and respiration and heart function of governing blood and blood vessels. It controls speech and strength of voice. It promotes blood circulation to extremities. Next is true chi or zen chi. This is the final stage of chi transformation. It circulates in channels and nourishes organs, originates from the lungs and assumes two different forms. These are nutritive chi or yin chi and defensive chi or 
way G. Nutritive or construction G or yin G nourishes internal organs and the whole body. It is closely related to blood and flows in the blood vessels and channels. It is activated whenever a needle is inserted in an acupuncture point A. Then we have also defensive chi or wei chi. This is the coarser form of chi than yin chi. It flows on the outer layers of the body and it protects the body from attack of exterior pathogenic factor. This defensive chi or wei chi uh, functions, warms, moistens, and partially nourishes skin and muscles, adjusts the opening and closing of the pores, and therefore regulates sweating. It regulates the body temperature chiefly by regulating sweating. Then under, it is under the control of the lungs. The central chi or zong chi, it refers to the chi of stomach and spleen. Also used in cases of deficiency of spleen chi, which result in prolapse of an organ. Upright or correct chi, cheng chi or true chi, is usually only used in relation in contrast to pathogenic factor or evil chi and indicates the body's resistance to exterior diseases. Now this is a diagram of the production of chi. This started from the food and drink that we take after birth. The food and drink that we take goes directly to the stomach to be ripened and rotten. After the stomach had been, uh, after the stomach ripened and rotten the food, the spleen now transforms it to good chi or food and drink chi. Then after that, the spleen will now transport the good chi to the lungs to be combined with the air chi, deriving from the air we breathe. Now, the combined good chi and air chi is now called gathering chi or zong chi. In the chest, the zong chi will now be combined with the yuan or original chi stored by the kidneys, transforming it into zen chi or true chi. Now, true chi or zen chi has two types, the yin chi or construction chi or nutritive chi and Wei Qi or the defensive Qi. Wei Qi flows in the ex exterior while Ying Qi flows in the interior. Okay, Pa? Now let's go to the basic functions of Qi. Transforming, transporting, holding, raising, protecting, and warming. Yin Lang Pa, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mom Teresita. We proceed now to Zangfu organs. Okay. And uh, for today, we will talk about the kidneys, the functions of the kidneys. The kidneys store the essence, which is called Jing. It is formed from congenital essence and acquired essence. Kidney essence is stored in the kidneys in liquid form. And uh, kidney essence can be supplemented by acquired essence. Kidney essence determines growth, reproduction, development, sexual maturation, conception, and pregnancy. It generates marrow and is the basis for consti constitutional strength of human being. It forms the basis for sexuality. The essence is the material basis for the male semen or female ovum. It forms the material basis 
for the kidney yin and kidney yang. The yang aspect of essence provides the basis for kidney yang, also referred to as mingmen, the source of life. Kidney yang warms all the other organs. Only with the support, the organs can fulfill their respective functions. So the, uh, obviously the functions of the organs rely or are, are dependent on the kidney yang. The yin aspect of the essence will provide the basis for the kidney yin. And this yin aspect will nourish the yin of all other organs, the origin of marrow, therefore also the brain, considered to be a sea of marrow. The jing controls the different stages in life, from birth, puberty, menopause, death. Aging is therefore considered to be the physiological decrease of essence. What are the signs of old age? Bad memory, deafness, hair loss, graying. These are signs of decreasing kidney essence. Kidney essence is responsible for the production and function of marrow, bones, and brain. The marrow in Chinese medicine is a substance that is common matrix of the bones, bone marrow, brain, and spinal cord. If the kidney essence is too strong, the bones will be strong. If the kidney essence is weak, the bones are not adequately nourished, so the bones become brittle and you develop osteoporosis. Weak kidney essence in children will cause poor, develop poor bone development resulting in pigeon chest. Teeth belong in the category of bones. If the kidney essence is weak, the teeth will be loose. Kidney essence produces marrow, which generates the spinal cord and fills up the brain. If kidney essence is strong, it will nourish the brain, memory and concentration, thinking and sight. Weak kidney essence, as we mentioned earlier, is manifested by poor memory, poor concentration, dizziness, dull thinking, poor sight. So when you have feelings of lightheadedness, this means there is impaired kidney function. Kidneys are like a gate that opens and closes in order to control the flow of body fluids in the lower burner. Correct balance between kidney yin and kidney yang brings about the correct regulation of urination. Kidneys will provide a chi for the bladder to store and transform urine. Blood deficiency, body fluids deficiency, dryness, dampness is determined. Kidneys receive fluids from the lungs some of which are vaporized, send them back to the lungs in order to moisten them. So that explains why or how kidneys will govern water. Kidney yang provides a spleen with the heat it needs to carry out its function of transporting and transforming fluids. So if you have kidney yang deficiency, then you will also have a spleen damp spleen weakness resulting in dampness. In the same way, kidney yang is responsible for body's metabolism. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's now call on uh, Mambina Pasqua for the meridian theory or the channel theory. Good afternoon, Ulet, Mam Vina. Good afternoon, Paulet, Dr. Good afternoon po sa lahat. So, lang meridian of Han, Greek, uh, yin po. Tayo ngayon. The lang meridian of the Han, Greek, yin. The internal branch of the lang meridian be uh, begins in the interior of the middle warmer at nag-flow flow downward to enter the large intestine. Its coupled organ uh it close up again and through the dia uh, diaphragm, it enters both the lungs. Nagta-travel po siya towards the throat and then to the shoulders 
and emerge as an exterior uh, exterior meridian between the skin and the muscles at point uh, lung one. The lung meridian continues as an exterior meridian down to the ventral aspect of the whole arm through the uh, radial artery of the wrist along the thinner on the lateral side of the thumb, finishing at the corner of the nail pop. So lung one location, six tune lateral of the anterior midline and approximately one tune below lung two, slightly mitchell to the lower uh, border of the uracoid process. Uh, point explanation, the alarm point of mu front point, ito po yung alarm po ng uh, mu front point. This would manifest pain if there is dysfunction of the organ. Needling, uh, the point alleviates the pain and uh, reduces the dysfunction. At this point, it is related to the organ and it is located on the front yin surface of the organ. It is also used to improve the cooling and calming of yin qualities of the organ. And next po ay lang for location on the medial aspect of the upper arm, fortune uh, distal to the end of the uh, anterior axillary fold in the depression on the, on the lateral, lateral border of the sulcus bicipitalis lateralis. Point explanation po, this is an uh, oxygenating point for the entire body. It is interestingly located by raising the arm and touching, touching it with the tip of the nose. It is used in the treatment of pulling uh, neuropathy, numbness, and poor healing of uh, wounds in uh, the periphery and to oxygenate nerve and brain cells in the treatment of multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, uh, disease and paralysis. Pag lang five naman po location in the cubital crease on the radial aspect of the tendon of the biceps. Point explanation, this can be used to sedate for the most part of yin, excessive uh, mucus, lung edema, but could be used with certain needle techniques to sedate the young, uh, young two. Bleeding of the vein in this region through Blood leading, one can also let out heat. Is very successful in the treatment of bronchitis, pneumonia, orticaria, and other similar heat conditions. All the important energy balancing points of the meridians are found between the elbow and finger. Um, tawag po nila dito ay uh, the five element points. The Luo connecting point, the UN source point, and the Z clip point. Uh, we discussed their use in detail in the following chapters. So, yan po. Nakikita po yung mga points po dyan. Lang six naman, ang uh, location on the line connecting lang five in the cubital crease and lang nine on the rest uh, crease naman, joint space, five tune from lung 5 and 7 tune from lung 9. Point explanation, this is the side cliff point of the lung meridian. Every meridian has side cliff point, which can be found in a, a cliff or an enter space between two structure, uh, st structures, such as the two muscles o kaya yung dalawang tendons. This, uh, these points have the, the power to disperse the energy in the organ and meridian very quickly. So they are useful in the treatment of acute uh, states of disease. In fact, it is convenient to remember them as acute points. So acute points po mga yan. Lang sabi naman, location on the radial aspect of the forearm directly above the styloid process of the radius approximately 1.5 tune proximal to the wrist joint space so rest crease in a V-shaped groove. 
Ang explanation po nito ay, this is the low connecting point of lung which connects it with uh, the large intestine. It's coupled meridian. This point is outside of the wrist on the large in, uh, intestine meridian. It is a very important point used as an area uh, area distal point for uh, the neck and occiput as a meridian distal point for lung and a confluent point naman for the extraordinary meridian, the rain meridian. As the point is on the bone, it should be uh, given with skin pinch, so kukuratin, up away from the bone and the needle pointing either either in or against the direction of energy flow in the region. In most circumstances, it is given in the direction of energy flow, which is with needle pointing to fingers to tonify the yin. The superficial meridians that flow between the, between the skin and the muscles have a continuous flow from one to the neighboring meridian. The lung meridian flows into the large intestine meridian next, but this energy flow is not always from the last point of the previous meridian into the first point of the following one. Sometimes energy flow from one to the neighboring uh, meridian can be through an uh, earlier point in, uh, into the latter point. It should be noted that energy flows from point in lung seven into lungs in this uh, large intestine. And the point or entry into large intestine is through LI4. So yan po yung kung saan makikita yung, yung point po acupuncture point. So, uh, punta po tayo sa lung 8. Uh, lateral to the radial artery, one tune, proximal to the ventral wrist, joint space, most distal rest crease po. Point explanation, this is the house element point of the lung meridian. Uh, ibig po sabihin that it is the metal point of lung, its own element. This point can be used for sedating or tonifying lung yin, which uh, is the house energy of lung uh, as uh, it is a yin organ. Depending po on the tonification or sedation needle technique given when treating the point. Next po tayo, lung 9, location on the ven ventral aspect of the wrist, wrist at the level of the wrist joint space, most distal rest crease on the radial aspect of the radial artery, uh, radial artery and ulnar to the tendon of the abductor uh, pollicis longus muscle. Point explanation, the tonification point and earth point of the meridian and an influential point for the blood vessels. This, this is quite superficial point at uh, the isal rest hole, radial to the radial artery. It is used for tonifying lung yin and to a lesser degree, lang yang. It is good point to energize a tired patient and also um, natitreat na po yung problems of the blood vessels, especially renal uh, syndrome. So dito, tingnan po natin yung lang 9, yan po. Malapit po, lang 8, lang 9, heart 7, yan po. Style process of the rages. So lo location at the midpoint of the palmar, palmar border of the lang ten po ito. Uh, at the midpoint of the palmar border of the first metacarpal bone. Ang explanation po nito, the, the fire point and grandmother point of lang. This point is especially used to tonify lang yang and should be used in a respiratory illnesses which worsens in wet and cold weather and improve in dry, warm weather naman. There are uh, cold, damp, co there are cold, damp, cold disease of the lung and respond well to young tonification. Yan po nakikita, yung lung 10. Punta po tayo sa lung 11, location on the thumb. 
0.1 tune from the regal corner of the nail. Ang um, point explanation, the last point of the meridian, often used for bloodletting in the treatment of uh, inflammatory disease of the nose, uh, sinuses, and throat. Ang note po dito, it is important to learn the interior flow of meridians as much as the exterior flow. Though uh, there are no points on these inner branches, possible po uh, to cause indirect energy flow in them with acupuncture. This enables us to treat many meridians with only a few needles. So, kunti lang ang needles. So, yan lang po. Thank you, doctor. Thank you sa lahat. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Vina. Okay, punta na tayo sa last but not the least topic. Steel on bleeding. Okay. So, ipagpapatuloy natin yung discussion natin kahapon on uh, Ano ba yung top? Ah, yeah. Okay, the topic was about uh, Okay, let's talk about coughing blood, part two. Spleen and lung chi deficient, not holding blood, clinical manifestations, chronic coughing of blood, pale in color, weak voice, slight breathlessness, propensity to catching cold, tiredness, depression, loose stools, poor appetite. Tongue is pale, pulse is weak. Treatment principle, tonify spleen and lung chi Stop bleeding. Points, bladder 13, lung 9, bladder 20, REN 12, stomach 36, lung 6, lung 7. All with reinforcing method except the last two points, which should be needled with even method. Bladder 13, lung 9, bladder 20, REN 12, and stomach 36, tonify lung and spleen chi. Lung 6 and lung 7, Stop bleeding from the lungs. Case history. A 65-year-old woman had been suffering from breathlessness for many years. She had had tuberculosis of the lungs 40 years earlier. Her main problem at the time of consultation was breathlessness on exertion, general exhaustion, and coughing of blood streak sputum. She also suffered from night sweating, dry throat, and a feeling of heat in the afternoon. She was very prone to cold, which immediately affected her chest and caused bronchitis with the expectoration of profuse yellow-greenish sputum. She was overweight. Her tongue was slightly red, swollen, and with a rootless coating in the front part. Her pulse was slippery. Diagnosis. This patient suffered from two conditions causing rather contradictory signs. There are clear symptoms of lung indeficiency, night sweating, dry throat, breathlessness, feeling of heat in the evening, and cough with blood tinged sputum. The tongue and the pulse show a different condition. Although the tongue is a rootless coating in the front part, which shows lung indeficiency, in this condition, it should be thin rather than swollen. The pole should be floating empty rather than slippery. These two findings are due to the fact that there is also spleen chi deficiency leading to phlegm. This is also confirmed by the expectoration of profuse sputum when she has bronchitis and her being overweight. Treatment principle. Nourish lung yin, clear lung empty heat, tonify spleen chi and resolve phlegm. This patient was treated only with acupuncture. The main points, all with reinforcing method, except those to resolve phlegm, were selected from the following. REN 12, stomach 36, spleen 6, REN 12, lung 9. REN 12, stomach 36, and spleen 6 to tonify the spleen and resolve phlegm. REN 12 also tonifies the lungs. Lung 9 to nourish lung yin. Bladder 13, bladder 43, and do 12 to strengthen the lungs. 
Bladder 43 is particularly indicated to nourish lung yin in chronic conditions. Lung 10 with even method to clear lung empty heat and stop bleeding from the lungs. Stomach 40 with even method to resolve phlegm. The bleeding from the lungs stopped after six treatments, but she was treated for more than two years to strengthen the lungs and spleen on a long-term basis. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Doke.